Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 166 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a special request from a very close friend of mine. Actually his friend requested it through him. But as everyone should know by now, I really enjoy doing requests. And this one was quite fun. If you hear a baby, I have one in the living room with me. I'm home alone, so I'm on dad duty. Um, hashtag sorry, not sorry. <clears throat> but let's get into this. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Harlequin Tusfish. Now the Harlequin... Harlequin? Not Quinn. Harlequin Tusfish. Scientific name Corridon fasciatus. Again, that's scientific name Corridon fasciatus. It is part of the family Labridae. Now we talked about the family Labridae before. That is the family of wrasses. They are very prevalent fish, especially in the aquarium trade. You can find them all over in all sorts of different um, colorations and species are out there. But this is a really beautiful one that is fairly different than the rest of the wrasses. So I'm, like I said, I'm quite happy to do this. Now this fish is native to the Western Pacific Ocean, but it actually has a very odd distribution. Um, it's found from the Ryukyu, Ryukyu Islands, um, which are the islands right to the south of Japan, to Taiwan. And then there's a big gap, and then they're found from Queensland, Australia, east to New Caledonia. That's actually a fairly decent gap. And I'm of the opinion that because of that gap, that possibly points to the harlequin tusfish being two separate species. Especially considering that it is generally accepted that the um, Australian coloration is actually considered more, bright, more brightly colored than the Japanese Eastern Asia one. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to drink some water. I am getting over an illness, so Gotta hydrate But because you have those two different distributions, I feel that that's Really really interesting Just fascinating to me the fact that they're found separately now Let's get further into the fish um, This fish lives in rocky and coral rich areas as many fish of this coloration do um, you can usually find them in crevices or under overhangs. They really like that sort of cave system. Um, and they're found at depths of anywhere from 5 to 35 meters, which is 16 to 115 feet. So they are a little shallower than most other fish. But that's to be expected from a lot of coral-free fish. Um, I would consider this a medium-sized fish. They're found up to about 30 to 32 centimeters, which is right around that 12-inch mark. Um, but as you can see, this is an absolutely beautiful fish. They have this base shade of orange that transitioned into like this blue or green, um, especially towards the rear end of the body. They have these paler bars that are outlined in this vivid electric blue. Um, just a stunning fish. And that's actually where it gets its name, the Harlequin uh, coloration. Harlequins being the jesters, you know, bright colored with alternating vivid blue stripes and things like this. It's really fascinating that th this particular one has this like really pale with red tipped fin. And you can see on the fins, they do have that outline of that electric blue. Just an incredibly striking fish, especially with this red eye. But, and they have this very large head, by the way. But if you've been looking down near the beginning of the head, you'll see that there's actually some interesting, something interesting going in the teeth. We actually have two pictures here. By the way, it does have a red eye. You can see here, looks kind of monstrous. And then boom, here's a much better one. But that's actually where it gets its name, the tuskfish. It has these sharp, bright blue teeth, very blue teeth. And you know, it looks like the tusks. <clears throat> and so that's a Pretty good characteristic. It's a stunning characteristic. And makes it almost look like an ogre. Ogre teeth is what I thought of when I saw this. Um, 
Now this is a diurnal fish that is very territorial. There's some conflicting um, stuff, con some conflicting stuff out there in terms of how territorial and how aggressive it is. I believe in my research that it's pr probably pretty territorial, especially if it's um, the only one in like an, uh, an aquarium. And they can apparently be, be usually found when you're scuba diving. They're patrolling their territory, hunting for food, and defending against other intruders. Um, very. That's where I, it seems to me that why they're so territorial. Um, and they do have a carnivorous diet. These things are pretty aggressive towards their foods. But they actually don't eat like other fish. When you usually see f uh, teeth like this these tusks you usually think of like fish eaters because they're pegging they're they're like peg like so they can hold on to slippery fish and things like that that's actually not the case they primarily feed on crustacean mollusks and other small invertebrates with this large head that makes powerful jaws and when combined with the tusks that it allows them to really pierce and crush hard shell prey items which is in kind of stark contrast because when we're usually talking about animals that eat mollusk and crustaceans they usually have something like a human molar as their tooth that grinds this one is more like a piercing um kind of interesting now they are actually quite popular in the american in the aquarium trade um you can find them for about 200 dollars <clears throat> very very expensive um they don't survive well in captivity, but that seems to be because they need a very large and well-maintained aquarium. Um, and they can be very aggressive towards other fish as well, so you have to be careful even more. Um, what's interesting as well in the aquarium trade is I saw a lot of uh, blog posts about people saying I they didn't like the sand bottom. <clears throat> and what happened is I found some other research that said that they don't bury in the sand. A lot of wrasses, when they get scared, will swiftly bury themselves in the sand. The harlequin tuskfish actually f stays close to a cave, and when it gets scared, it rushes into its cave. And that's how it um, handles running away from predators and stuff like that. Um, in terms of reproduction, there's not a lot known. It is assumed that they are protogynous hermaphrodites meaning they're all born female and then the most aggressive female in the area will become the male um it's more just sort of generally assumed but now for the interesting fact that we are going to end the video on um i it it actually blew my mind so we've been talking about the teeth and this beautiful coloration well, apparently, when they are defending against intruders, these teeth will actually become... <laughs> She's excited. These teeth will actually be get, um, become pink. Um, you know how some animals will change color to signify danger and things like that? When you're usually talking with this bright coloration, they're trying to say, Hey, I taste bad. Stay away from me. I could be poisonous. Whether or not they are, that's a different story. But apparently, when they're defending against intruders or prey items, when they're trying to scare other things, their teeth will go from this vivid blue to like a pink, which is really weird to me. Because, I mean, we've all, chameleons and every octopi, things like that, that change coloration, especially on the skin. But changing the actual color of a tooth, which is predominantly a bone and I didn't see much information on that so I could be wrong on that but I did see at least two places where they said yes it changes from blue to pink when they're being aggressive or defending their territory which was very very bizarre but thank you guys so much again I really appreciate it hope to see you again if I don't please be safe have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If you'd like to have a request, please drop a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the link down below. It is by no means expected, but very much appreciated. Regardless, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and...